Now, the number of children being put in foster care is growing, but Channel 4 News has discovered serious concerns about abuse allegations against foster carers. Because although there are figures about the number of abuse allegations, nobody knows what that abuse is or what happens to the foster carers or indeed the children. We've also learned that local authorities cannot always be held legally responsible if a child is abused in foster care. Our health and social care correspondent Victoria MacDonald has this report. I'm still in counselling, going through the therapy, still got the crisis team involved. I'm still having my down days and stuff. It wasn't long ago I was in hospital over an overdose. This is the tragic legacy of years of child abuse. Not at the hands of parents nor by strangers, this was sustained daily assaults by a foster carer. When I was like 11 that he started, the dad started being a bit touchy-feely and it got worse from that. It weren't till I was 13 that his son started joining in on it, but um, yeah, and that carried on till I was 18. The abuse finally stopped after Emma, who can't be identified, left the foster home. She's now in her 20s and married and one day would like a family of her own. But only once the nightmares stop. What happened to Emma is deeply disturbing. That children in foster care are properly protected is vital. Not least because 75% of children in care are now placed with foster parents and the government wants to increase those numbers. There is no doubt that foster care generally works well, but as Emma's case shows, abuse does happen. The only problem is nobody knows how many children are involved. No one's ever tried to collect the data. And we've also learned that local authorities can't always be held legally responsible once that abuse has been discovered, even though they put that child into care in the first place. The only official figures available show that last year there were about 1,800 allegations and 196 referrals to the Independent Safeguarding Authority. So now the NSPCC has commissioned this academic to try to provide more answers. Was it emotional abuse? Is it neglect? Is it physical or sexual abuse? We don't actually know any of that. I'm actually surprised that we don't have this knowledge given how many children are going into foster care. People have long been aware of the problem of allegations against foster carers, many of which proved to be unfounded. What's been very little attention to is how many children do actually experience abuse and neglect in foster care. Indeed, when we asked local authorities to provide Channel 4 News with more information, only 23 responded in detail. From that, we can see that more than half the allegations involved physical abuse, a fifth concerned neglect, and 10% related to sexual abuse. And a total of 57 authorities said around one in five were upheld. No matter how scant this information, it does provide the most detailed picture to date, and that will now be fed into Professor Beale's work. But the sad fact is, the figures are likely to be an underestimate because not all the abuse is reported. Did you ever think to tell anybody? No. Why not? Because I just, I, I don't know, I, I didn't trust any adults around and I didn't want them to know because then I'd have to move on again and go to a different family again and this was my third family so it was just like stick it out sort of thing. It sounds amazing that nobody from the local authority or social services knew that he was like this. He was completely different when anybody was in the house. How did the social workers not pick up on anything when they were supposed to be trained? I don't want to like blame anybody except from him and his son, but you'd thought that they'd have picked up on something. With kids, you can always sort of see. There are stringent checks made on foster carers and any allegations should be investigated thoroughly, but sometimes, as we've learned, the system fails. This man's stepdaughter was taken into care before he met her mother, but it was he who later uncovered something deeply troubling. Our daughter had been in care for four days when she was discovered naked in bed with the male foster carer. Our daughter was not removed from, from the house. The police were not brought in and the matter was just 
left. I mean, the whole thing is is really inconceivable, and it's sick. The local authority did eventually apologise for not investigating the case. By their actions, they actually put her at risk. The local authority apology is a waste of paper. But this is where there is a gap in the law, because local authorities cannot always be held liable if the abuse happens in foster care. If a child is um, abused in a residential care home, then the child can sue the local authority if um, that happens. Uh, if a child is abused in a foster care placement, uh, there is no recourse for that child. David Greenwood is now preparing a test case to have this challenged. He argues that even if the local authority did not know a child was being abused, they put that child there, so should be responsible. I think the, the law as it's moving at the moment will enable children to firstly sue for compensation and secondly to improve uh, safeguarding for children for the future. It will mean that local authorities will have to think very carefully about their, the level of supervision. In a statement, the government told Channel 4 News. We are working with local authorities, independent fostering services and foster carers to improve the way allegations are handled and address issues around support for foster families, the timeliness of investigations and the threshold for removing children from the foster home. Everyone agrees that what is now needed is a clear picture of the levels and types of abuse and what happens when allegations are made. But most importantly, they need to know, as do the children, that someone will be held responsible when things go wrong. Equally, as Professor Bihal says, it is also in everyone's interest that foster caring is encouraged. No, children who are looked after by the state should experience only the highest quality of care. That's what everyone in the system wants, certainly most foster carers, the vast majority of foster carers, certainly local authorities, social workers. In Emma's case, the foster carers have now been struck off, but she still has to live with the memory, not just of the abuse, but also with the knowledge that she was let down by the people meant to be caring for her.